Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Two dozen days into the UAW strike against General Motors and the stalemate is putting at least one local business on the brink. Nick. This Imagine Theater in Canton now back open, but they couldn't open on time because of all this. We'll show you the damage left behind after a pickup truck drove right through the front doors. Her life had just started and now this Port Huron toddler is gone and the reason family members are giving is simply heartbreaking. Lethal drugs hidden inside used candy wrappers. Uh, that recipe for disaster family members believe ended a little girl's life at just 14 months. Her family also has questions about why it took so long to get her to the hospital once the signs of trouble showed up. Local 4 Sean Lay has the details from Port Huron after speaking with loved ones trying to come to grips with this senseless loss. Good evening from Port Huron. Family members of 14 month old Zayana Reddick tell me the little girl stopped breathing here at this Port Huron Days Inn. They believe the little girl was exposed to lethal drugs, but drugs wrapped in Tootsie Roll packaging. They think the little girl picked up what she thought was a piece of candy and put it in her mouth. My sister said he had it wrapped up in Tootsie Roll papers. So, you know, any child, they, if he dropped it or whatever, any child see she was a little kid. Paper, anything, they see stuff, they pick it up off the floor. Shana Trice is the aunt of 14-month-old Zayana Reddick. Denise Edwards is the little girl's grandmother. Both believe the happy, healthy baby came in contact with lethal drugs wrapped as candy August 25th and stopped breathing. Zayana and her mom were visiting a home near 13th and Division in Port Huron. Family members say the mom told police a man placed what she believes were drugs meant for sale, wrapped in used Tootsie Roll wrappers on a table. Zayana's mother asked to leave. That's what she told my cousin, like, I feel uncomfortable. If I don't know that y'all did this, I wouldn't have ever brought me or my kids over here to this house. The family says that man gave the girl and her mother a ride, and when they pulled into this Days Inn in Port Huron, Zayana wasn't breathing. The family alleges the man drove around, delaying critical care for the little girl. And when they reached McLaren Hospital, Zayana was gone. Port Huron police say they interviewed the man, his girlfriend, and Zayana's mom, and are investigating the little girl's death as suspicious. She was just a good, literally a good baby. She was actually, you know, God sent her from heaven because that's how she was. She was a true angel. <laughs> Absolutely heartbreaking. We're live tonight with more from Port Huron Police. They're telling me that they are waiting for autopsy results, which will include toxicology results. Family members tell me what's in those results. Absolutely key to what happens here and finding answers about what happened to this little 14 month old. Guys, back to you. And police say that little girl had no prior health issues, right, Sean? Says she was absolutely healthy. Family members say healthy and happy. And even at the hospital, doctors checked her out for each and everything, could find nothing except the fact that she stopped breathing. So what's in that toxicology report <laughs> will tell a big part of what happened here. Just heartbreaking. Okay, Sean. Devin. It is day 24 on the picket line for those striking General Motors. And as the UAW strike grinds on, the damage done to those who depend on GM is getting worse. Tonight, Local 4 Benz at Ramaloni live at a Dearborn trucking company that is teetering on the edge here, hoping for some kind of quick settlement, Rod. That's right, Devin. Take a look behind me here. This is Phoenix Trucking. You've got dozens of trailers in the yard here. You've got trucks just sitting here parking, collecting dust. The clock is ticking on the debt that they have to pay. And they're saying here, if this strike doesn't settle soon, they're going to be out of business. We're just asking for an extension or something. We can probably come up with something, but not the whole payment, you know. You're watching Mohamed Thalji quite literally plead for his entire business life. Compass Lease out of Chicago owns the trailers in the parking lot here, 100 in all. If we don't make the payment, he's really going to take the trailers, he said? The problem is they're filled with GM parts, and GM told Phoenix to park the trailers until the strike ends, leaving Mohamed to talk the unthinkable just a month ago. We've been in talks, me and my partner, about, you know, shutting the company down or you know, stopping the business and we're trying to fi find a solution. It's hurting us really bad. Yeah. Muhammad's partner, Wael Talib, says neither of them are sleeping much with 21 employees on the payroll and 100 drivers impatiently waiting for their next work. Most of my drivers, they try to find a temporary job like Uber. 
Phoenix also employs subcontractors like Ferez Mahas. He owns five trucks that run GM parts all over the region. The married father of three with two kids in college prays daily for a settlement. I've been coming here every day, every morning for the past month trying to find a, a load and we cannot find a load because all of the trailers, as you see, they're all filled with GM products and we cannot move these trailers. And so here's where we are. The Phoenix Trucking Guys used to be just a container company, but they decided to go away from that because of the trade war. And so now they went with GM thinking, hey, it's a little bit more stable. And here we are now. They're on the edge of going out of business. Back to you. Well, Rod, do they see an absolute drop dead for Phoenix's survival here? A very interesting question. What they're saying is it takes two weeks to ramp back up to what they were doing. And so they need in the next two weeks for this thing to settle for them to be able to survive. If it goes past that, they're done. And unfortunately, nothing uh, too hopeful to report as of tonight. All right, Rod. All right. Well, well, let's get you caught up on your forecast. We've been talking and bragging about how beautiful it's been the past been few great. days. Yeah. We're watching some weird, nasty things start to take shape out west. <laughs> things are going to change here eventually, Ben. Yeah, we can see it coming down the pike. But at least in the short term, really the only thing we have to complain about is it's a little cool in the mornings. Uh, those lows starting out were in the 40s, except for Ann Arbor, which briefly touched 39 there at the airport. And translate that to the afternoon temperatures, which have been in the mid upper 60s, got close to 70 at Metro, but now we're on the way down. We're going to see even warmer temperatures, at least in the short term. But again tonight, possibility of some patchy shallow fog. So we'll talk more about that. It does look like more of the same for the rest of the work week. But we are going to be making a U-turn over the weekend, a very noticeable change in the temperatures, but also some rain and wind coming with it. We'll look at all that in just a few minutes. Kim? Ben. The Imagine Theater in Canton is back open tonight after a stolen pickup truck crashed through the front doors so thieves could take the ATM. And as Nick Monticelli shows us, there was so much damage the theater couldn't open on time. It's bad. <laughs> Glass everywhere. And that is an understatement. The damage done to the Imagine Theater in Canton will cost thousands and thousands of dollars to repair. The cleaning crew was inside working when the pickup truck came barreling in around 345 this morning. I did hear a car and I heard um, a bang and I thought it was somebody like dropping something or yeah. I didn't imagine. <laughs> My friend had ran, got me. Whoever this thief is stole a truck from an apartment complex across Ford Road then use it as a battering ram, backing in through the doors and then hitting the ATM over and over again until it broke open. There was so much damage and glass and debris, the theater could not open until this afternoon, canceling scheduled shows. I mean, it doesn't make me mad. It's just unfortunate that bad things happen and that there's bad people out there that will do something like this. The only good news is none of those working inside were hurt, including Justin Jones who was working his very first shift. Pretty crazy, one of the <laughs> one of the most eventful first days of work ever. Now you heard the theater couldn't open this morning. About 12 shows had to be canceled, but now it is all up and running again. It's just this section entrance that is closed off. If you know anything, if you saw something unusual around 345 in the morning, Canton Police Department would love to hear from you. In Canton, Nick Monticelli, Local four. Hey, Nick and as Nick mentioned, a stolen truck was used in this robbery. It was a 2004 Ram truck. Police found it abandoned at a nearby business not long after it happened. Meanwhile, Huron Township detectives are investigating to see if a similar incident is connected to the Canton smash and grab we just told you about. Looking at video of a scene from early Tuesday morning where police say a truck stolen out of Romulus slammed into this mobile gas station on Huron River Drive near Waltz Road and an ATM was taken from the building. Detroit police say they have now figured out who's responsible for tearing down a home belonging to state rep Sherry Gay Danyogo. Police say Gibson Brothers Trucking tore down the home on Detroit's west side that was being renovated for a needy family. A prescription bottle left behind the apparent clue that led to that company. Company's owner, Sherman Gibson, is facing charges for the home's demolition. But tonight, the question of why the home was torn down in the first place is still unanswered in a letter to Detroit City Council. Gay Danyogo says she's concerned it's not the only time a home has been torn down in Detroit like this.
A Clinton Township man is found guilty after a trial for a deadly workplace shooting. 25 year old Jerry Motley was convicted of first degree murder, assault with intent to murder and gun charges. Motley was found to have killed a 61 year old and injured a 34 year old in a shooting at Reliable Fence Company in Clinton Township back in January. Shooting happened after an argument that took place in the workplace. Motley is going to be sentenced next month. Oakland County Health officials reporting two more skunks have tested positive for rabies in the area. The two skunks were removed from Southfield and Farmington Hills. So far this year, there have been 11 verified cases of rabies in Oakland County among bats and skunks. Health officials are urging people to stay away from wild animals to protect against rabies. Right now, there is a boil water advisory for folks in Oxford. That's because of a water main break. We're told residents in the area of Lakes Edge Drive from Oakwood Drive up to Woodbridge Court. Oakwood uh, Drive to Woodbridge Court need to boil their water before drinking it or using it for cooking or for brushing your teeth or washing dishes until further notice. We'll keep you advised. Well, all sorts of food cravings can now be fulfilled in Midtown. That's because a bunch of new restaurants are now yeah. open on the ground level of the Anthony Wayne Drive Apartments. This afternoon, there was a ribbon cutting ceremony and a street fair with the local restaurants that are opening. Those restaurants include 1000 Degrees Pizza, Uncle Joe's Chicken Fingers, Beyond Juice, Tubby's Sub Shop uh, with Just Baked Cupcakes and Leo's Coney Island as well. Those sound great. A whole bunch all in one spot. Indeed. Nice. All right, time for a check of the national stories. You'll see ahead at 630 on NBC Nightly News. Well, Lester Holt joins us now from New York with a preview of what's coming up later on the night. Lester. Hey, Devin and Kim. Tonight, pictures in the front lines as Turkey attacks America's Kurdish allies following that virtual green light from President Trump. Also, an NBC News exclusive sit-down interview with Bernie Sanders about his recent heart attack and his political future. Yeah, Lester, some have uh, questioned whether the Sanders campaign was a little too slow to admit that it was a heart attack. I'm assuming he talked about those this criticisms today. Yeah, he did, in fact, and he called the claims nonsense. He told our Harry Smith it took a few days after he was admitted to the hospital to really understand what had happened. Coming up tonight, why Sanders says he is still fit to be president. Well, we see in just a bit. Okay, we'll look forward to uh, hearing what you have to say. We'll see you then, Lester. Thank you. Okay. Still ahead, a common food item men may want to work into their diets if they're looking to expand their family. Also, neighbors in one part of Oakland County tired of seeing this guy creeping around their homes where and when he's showing up right if we come back. It's happening right now online. Identity thieves targeting your children. In a Help Me Hank special report starting tomorrow at 6 a.m., I'll show you what you can do to protect your kids.